a horror short trailer. We're going to do a little uh, horror film trailer, very Halloween. Um, it's not scary, though, so if any of you guys are, don't like horror films, it's all right. It's not, not the least bit scary. Okay, so um, you can go to the very top here. So let me see. Uh, this is the link that I shared. Let me go to that exactly. So copy and paste it into your web browser. And then this is what you should see, these different folders. If you go up to this uh, top part, it says horror short trailer, then you can go uh, click on that gray triangle and click the download button. Um, and it'll start to download on your computer. That's in Google Chrome, right? Uh, you, can, you can access it through any web browser. Should work, should work in any web browser. So while, while we're waiting, we'll, uh, we'll download that. And these are the files that we will work with. Probably have to unzip it. Let me see, where is the, I'm gonna stop my share for a second here. Garrett, did you want us to download all three folders? Yeah, mm -hmm. download everything. So yeah, it should be a video, a sound effects, SFX, and a music folder. And then looks like someone else, Joe Ellen, is that, have you joined us? Yes, I have. Hello, hello, welcome. I'm not sure what I got into, but I found it uh, this <laughs> afternoon and I got it, I got it downloaded and I don't know if I did it right, but hey, I'm here to learn. That's great. That's great. I'm glad to hear that. So I'm going to share with you in the Zoom chat this Google Drive folder. Um, so uh, if you can download all that stuff from the Google Drive folder, it shouldn't be that big. It's only like 50 megabytes. Um, I will show you how to download it if you're unfamiliar. Um, so this is this is what it should take you. I can't seem to find anything. I can get probably find Chrome, but I can't seem to find any of this stuff. Oh, okay. On um, I'm you. I, I use Firefox most of the time, but I could probably get Google Chrome up. Yeah, well, you can you can fire it up on Firefox. You open up Firefox. Uh, just copy and paste that link into the top part. I don't know if I have Firefox. Maybe I can show you. I don't know. Copy and paste. Copy and paste what link? See, I'm using two computers here. Oh, okay, okay. Well, uh, I've got one for the Zoom, and then one I'm going to be using the program on. Okay, let me uh, let me shoot you a quick email then. Okay, uh, what, I can do it. Let me. It's uh, S T A M P W O L F. Sorry, one second. Uh, let me get this. Okay, say it again. S T A M P W O L F at southslope.net. What was that? Southslope.net. Southslope.net? Yep. Okay. Google Drive folder. Okay. So I'm going to send it to your email. You'll get the email and then just click that link. And then that should take you right to the folder. Okay. Uh, Joe Ellen, do you need me to email it to you as well? or? Were you able to find it in the chat? Was it, did that work for you, Joe Ellen? <clears throat> so where, where'd you send that? Stampwolf at softslope.net? I think I did, yeah. Oh, uh, okay, I ain't come yet. Let's, uh, maybe let me try again here. Maybe I sent it to, the, can, you, can you type in the chat your email? That would maybe help me, maybe I spelled it wrong. Do you know how to open the Zoom chat? Nope. Uh, right there. I, well, actually, yes. I, actually, I see it right here on my computer. Perfect. Yeah. Just put in your email there and I can copy and paste it. Maybe I spelled it wrong. So. There's a, it's, it's got a chat thing coming up here. So, I don't, oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. Uh, I, it came. I got it. I just clicked on it. Sorry. 
No, no worries. I'm pretty sure. Okay, so folders, music, SF, video. I'm sorry, what, what, which one do I? It's got Zoom Drive, right? And yeah, then, yeah, let me, let me show you right here, Sue. So you'll click on this triangle right here, this gray triangle. The gray triangle. You see that horror short trailer at the very top? Yep. Click on it, and then you'll click down here that says download. Download all? Yep, yeah, download That's all of it. Okay, it started. I'm there sorry, I'm slowing this process down. No, no worries, no worries. It's not at all. Was uh, everyone else able to download the stuff? Did it did it go all right? Yeah, nice. Very good. Okay. Um, I didn't hear anything from uh, Joe Ellen. Am I saying your name right? I'm sorry if I'm saying it wrong. Yes, you are. Sorry. Um, oh. I'm not exactly sure what's going on. I have kind of spotty internet problems. Okay. So I'm trying. I have Google Drive and it brings up music and something else. Not uh, sure. Yeah. Music, okay. SFX, and SFX video. SFX and video. Yeah. yeah. Do you see those three folders? Yep, yeah, I see them on my computer, but they're oh, wait a download ready. Open it or save it? We'll, uh, save it. Yeah, just save it. Save it to your downloads or your desktop somewhere where you can access it. Okay. I got it. Very nice. Hello, Jess. Or a short trailer. Yep, that's it. It's evidently unzipping the file. I don't know for sure. Yeah, it'll be a zipped file. You'll have to unzip it. So just uh, I think you just double click it. Should unzip. Okay. We can see you, Jess, but we cannot hear you. Hello. Oh. Can anyone hear Jess? I can't hear you. It says you're Hello. unmuted, but. Hello. Hello. Hi. Hi. Sorry. No, no worries. Out. Um. All right, Jess. Just real quick, while okay. we're everyone's getting situated. Okay. I'm gonna put in the Zoom chat a Google Drive link, and um, if you can click it and download it, that's gonna be the footage and the music that we're gonna use for today for our little. Uh, okay. And I can show you how to do that if you need to. Let me show oh, you how to download it. Yeah, yeah. It's just more about where it's going to end up going. Oh, okay. Yeah. Right. Tell me when you've got it open, and I can. <laughs> okay. All right. So if I click on that. I think I got it. You got it all? No. Nope. Yeah, there's a, a file folder for music SSX and video. Perfect. Yep, that's that's all you need. 
So while we uh, while we wait for um, everyone to download it, the members that signed up. So you're ready to start whenever you're ready. Perfect. Perfect. I'm supposed to download it. I don't yeah. Know. So while we wait for just to download it, I just want to go around and get to know everyone. Um, so uh, let's, you know, this is a video editing class. So let's talk about maybe our favorite movies. What's, what's our, our top favorite movie? Um, so I'll go first. My name's Garrett. Uh, I'm, from, I'm from New Jersey. My wife and I live in Austin, Texas now. Um, and my favorite movie is The Truman Show. I, I really enjoy The Truman Show. I don't know if you guys have seen that one. It's got a That's a Jim Carrey in it, but it's, a, it's an interesting one. Isn't it? All right. Absolutely. Great movie. Thanks. All right, who would like to go next? I'll go next. <clears throat> uh, my name is Tawny. Uh, I live in Iowa City and was actually born in Austin, Texas. Um, oh, great. Yeah. Um, my favorite movie is definitely Alien. Ah. Yeah. That's great. It's a very, uh, the trailer for that is like a really suspenseful trailer. It was. Uh, we, we looked at it in class one time because yeah. it was like a master class in how to do a video trailer, a movie trailer. That one, is, is that the super minimalist one? Yeah, uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. It is yeah. pretty good. Yeah. Cool. Very fun. All right, well, yeah, the only bad thing about that is hard to pick, pick my favorite because there's so many good movies out there. Yeah. I just rewatched In Bruges. Hmm. Oh, yeah, that's that's a pretty good movie too. Yeah, yeah. I remember watching that and being really impressed with it. Is that the one with uh, with Brendan Gleeson and Colin Farrell? Yeah. It's a bit of a dark comedy, is it not? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I remember really liking that one. Okay, uh, Joe Ellen. Oh boy. Um, <laughs> I am probably more of a rom com kind of person. So, right. my favorite of all time probably has to be French Kiss. Oh, I haven't seen that. And I don't that know is... if anybody else has seen that one. That is an excellent <laughs> choice. <laughs> if you haven't seen it, I suggest you do it. It's Meg Ryan and Kevin Klein doing Meg a very Ryan. good French accent. It's, very cool. Yeah, I love the quite lovely. From what I'm seeing. <laughs> cool. All right, Heidi, mom. That's my mother, by the way. My mother isn't here. Do you wanna? Do you wanna share with the group? We'll see. Nope. <laughs> okay. Um, Jess, are you all prepared? Did you get everything squared away? You want to introduce yourself to us? Um, so I am Jessica Brown. I'm from Maryland originally, so another oh. East Coaster. I've met your mom at Cassie's house. Oh, fun. Um, I am obviously not a tech person. That is my husband's job he runs <laughs> linux and everything has a particular way and so that's why he was helping me yeah. download because it's been far too easy over the years to just say honey how do you do this and <laughs> so therefore i know nothing um which is sometimes embarrassing um i am more of a book reader than a movie watcher um, and i never remember the titles of anything i can say that i did love the quiet place i did like oh, that movie that was, yeah that was a great one it was really good um okay. i enjoy watching all sorts of stuff but i just never turn it on for myself so yeah. um yeah so i i guess i have aspirations for a potential big project that would involve videoing video interviewing people and then clipping it together which is i guess why i hope to learn something perfect yeah yeah well i hope that we can help you on that we can help you learn the skills to be able to do that that's great um alexis do you want to share with us really fast yeah my name is alexis i'm the adult services coordinator here at the library um 
I also am not great at the video editing, which I tried to do myself for some library stuff and failed spectacularly. And that's when Cassie said, hey, call Garrett. And so he's going to help us do it so that we can all do it. I thought if I struggle with it, everybody else probably does too. So um, my favorite movie is hard to pick, but I think I'm going to go with Singing in the Rain. Oh, nice. Gene Kelly. That's great. Awesome. Well, perfect. All right. Well, let's let's dive in. Um, if everyone is prepared, um, I'm going to share my screen, and we are going to start by opening up um, DaVinci Resolve. So, if you haven't opened it up, let's open it up now. Have any of you guys had a chance to look at the program at all, or haven't even haven't even opened it yet? This is my first time opening it. Um, it looks a bit like Final Cut Pro. Is that true or no? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Most of these uh, the, these programs are called nonlinear editors. Mm. They kind of all follow a very similar pattern. If that makes sense. Um, so yeah, so great. So it'll open up to this page. It looks like um, for for everyone. I'm assuming, right? Unless you don't, then maybe let me know. But. We'll click on this uh, pro this button right here that says new project. And this is where you're going to, to name your project. So you can see I've already got some tests in here from um, some other stuff that I did. So you can name your project whatever I, whatever you want, but I'm going to name ours horror movie trailer three because I've already done one and two and this will be my third one. So once you name it, press create and it'll open up a bunch of windows and interfaces. Um, just let me know if you guys want me to slow down or pause or if something doesn't make sense. Um, I don't want to go too fast. So, um, all right. So DaVinci is now open. So it's, it's a really, really cool and powerful program. I'll tell you this right now. It's, it, um, it is a professional program. People in the industry, they use it. Um, and the program that you guys have is basically, you know, there's only a few limitations to it. So you, you have access to basically everything that the normal software would give you um, with just a few minor limitations. So it's a really cool program. So I'm excited to kind of dive into it. Um, so down here at the bottom, these are kind of the different workspaces um, that we will exist in. So I'll just kind of go over them briefly. This is media. So this is where you would kind of um, import all of the stuff you're working on. Um, this is the, I think, trim or edit or something like that. This is if you want to go into fine tune um, editing, but this is the, the normal editing workspace. And this is the workspace where we will be in the entire class, basically, you know, uh, there could be classes on classes on every single one of these workspaces. And so uh, we're just going to focus on one of them. And in this one, you'll be able to do most everything that you want. Um, so make sure that you're in this edit tab. And your workspace will probably look a little bit different than my workspace, um, especially if you haven't opened it before. Um, so I'll try to kind of reset my workspace uh, so that it kind of looks perhaps what you're looking at. Um, but so uh, a cool thing about um, DaVinci Resolve is that uh, what it's going to do is it's going to do something called a, like it's going to reference your media. So when I say media, I'm talking about, um, you know, those folders we just downloaded. So we have a video folder, we've got a sound effects folder, the SFX folder, and we've got a music folder. Um, and DaVinci Resolve, it can read all those different file types and it can, you know, put them in this program. It can put them, you know, in the timeline and eventually your final video. Um, so that's the first thing that we want to focus on. You know, we don't have anything in the timeline, so we need something to work with. Um, so if you go up to the very top left part that says media pool, click that and you'll see this thing that pops up. It probably says no clips in the media pool. Um, and that's, you know, totally fine um, because we're about to import some clips. Uh, so there's a lot of different ways to do stuff in this program. You know, there's probably four or five different ways to accomplish one thing. So I'll show you the way that I do it. And if that doesn't work for you, then we can problem solve and we can find another way that works. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up our folder that we have. Um, so the folder that we downloaded from Google Drive. And I'm literally just going to take these folders and I'm going to click and drag them into the media pool. 
Um, and so you'll see on my screen that now this section that was blank has now populated with basically like our raw materials. Um, so you can think of this kind of like, you know, if you're into crafting or something like that, this, these are your, you know, this is your, your paper and this is your um, pipe cleaners and your glitter and, and everything that you need, your raw materials to make your final product. Um, did anyone have any issues with that? Was everyone able to import their media? I got a question there. Yeah. It's on a, you know, on a web browser page. So when I click on that, it just basically comes up with the, with the folders. But I don't know. And then the problem, my program disappears behind it. Mm. I don't understand how that, how I move Okay. It. Yeah, no problem. So let's, let's do a different way then for you, Wolf. So you can do, you can import media uh, a different way. If you go up to the top, um, now you might be on a Windows, it sounds like, so I'm not sure. If I am you... on a Windows, you're on an Apple, I see. Yeah, yeah. So um, if you've got a file button, and maybe somebody with a Windows can, can help me out to see what Windows people see, but if there's a file button up there, do you see that at all? Yeah. Great, so you can do file, import file, import media. And it'll probably pull up a little dialog box. And then just just navigate to your your files, and you should be able to uh, kind of shift click and import. Um, you might have to do it a couple times, but uh, it, press open and it'll open in here. Now mine already are in here, so it's not going to import anything new. Did that work for you? Man, I ain't got to figure it out yet. Okay. Okay. It, uh, Wait a minute. Yeah. When I click on downloads. It's got a short, horse short trailer, Win64. Oh, man. Jessica, did you have any issues with it or did you, were you able to import the media? I am still trying to find where my husband put the file. Okay. <laughs> I can I can kind of see where it is, but when I try to import the file, I can't get it to bring, can't get it to go to the place where I think it is. Okay. So I might need to text him and have him come downstairs again. All right. No worries. Joellen, did you have any issues with that? Were you able to import the media? Oh, I'm getting there. I've got okay. the video. <laughs> okay, nice. Okay, well, I'll just talk about how uh, DaVinci kind of reads this media. Um, so that way, maybe you guys can, can better understand. So one, one kind of uh, important aspect when you're doing video editing is um, you've got to manage your files and you've got to make sure that you don't move them. Because uh, what I was talking about before was that DaVinci is going to reference exactly on your computer where these files are coming from. Um, so let me see if I can give you an example. If I move any of these files elsewhere, I'm going to move it to my desktop. Um, DaVinci is going to have a tough time understanding where I put it and it'll most likely, let's see, that didn't work, but it'll, it'll most likely, oh, there we go. It'll most likely pop up with this red um, missing media icon. So uh, just a, an important thing to do is to just make sure when you're, when you're working on stuff, you don't, uh, you don't move anything because DaVinci will have a tough time figuring out where it is. But so if I move it back, it should come back. So there you go. It's relinked in here. Um, yeah, so that's, that's the media pool. Uh, you know, you can organize it in all sorts of different ways, little thumbnails, you can do a list. No. I'm going to do thumbnails. It's nice to so see this I need this to stuff. get everything in from here. Um, so let's take a look at some of this footage while we kind of wait for everyone else to, to import it. So we've got five different clips here um, that are pieces of this little horror film trailer. Um, so if you double click on them, it'll pop up in what's called this preview window. 
So this isn't uh, your final movie. This is just, you know, you're looking at the video in its raw form, basically. So we've got a couple fun little clips here. We've got, um, there's this girl, she's banging on a door. Here's a close up of her hand as she's trying to grab the door. Um, here's a really nice clip. There's like some, the monsters revealed and there's the, the girl protagonist who's running away. Um, and then we've got this kind of final scene where this ax is coming down and chopping. And then another one where the monster is being revealed, this guy in this hazmat suit. So we've got some fun little clips to work with here. Um, and then the other things that we've got, we've got some sound effects that I thought would be fun. We probably don't have time to actually go through and put in sound effects. We'll probably just put in music in our video this time. Um, but you can play around with the sound effects whenever you've got an opportunity, if you want to go back to this. Um, I've included some things. So we've got, I think this is a, a foot dragging in the dirt. Um, we've got some heavy breathing. It's always, you know, I feel like a key to, to a nice horror film. Um, we've got, I think this is a, yeah, it's like a slash, like a meat slash kind of sound. Um, we've got a monster scream. Nice one. Uh, and then we've got three different tracks of music. So we got like a heartbeat. We've got, this is, you know, the classic organ. And then this is a more of like kind of a upbeat, uh, a little bit sci-fi soundtrack. Um, so was everyone able to figure out their media importing? You're able to do it, Jess? Yes. Wolf, you can't, you can't figure it out? No. What happens? I'm sorry. What happens when you do that file import file? Like click on import. If you're on a Windows, if yeah. you're on a Windows machine, what I found worked was just opening where you have it sourced. Uh, selecting all and then just copying it straight over, just dragging and dropping it. So into that field. Right. I, yeah, I, I, I got it on a, like I say, I got it on a, it, it, it wants to do some, you know, some, some bop music or something. I don't understand it. It, it disappears. This is totally for to me. I'm sorry. No, no. Here's, here's another solution for you. It's, it seems like what's happening is your DaVinci Resolve is being windowed, right? Because you're saying that you try to open the file and then DaVinci disappears, right? Yeah. So I think you can solve that by going back to DaVinci and if you click view. Uh, view? Yeah, up at the top here, view. And I believe I, I was figuring this out yesterday with my wife. Or was it workspace? Oh, oh no, no. Okay, it's not view. Go over to workspace. And is this this option right here, full screen window, is that checked for you or is that unchecked? No, it's not. It's unchecked. Oh, okay. Well, you want to keep it unchecked then. Hmm. Okay. Well, you might kind of figured this would happen. I'm so I'm not real smart about that stuff, but yeah, just go ahead and I'll I'll see if I can follow along and see what you're doing. Okay. Kind of work with it a little bit. That's okay. I'll mess around here. No worries. Um, and so just really quickly before we move on, so when you do the file import media, what what pops up for you? Do you see a little dialog box? Yeah, it says import media. And you click that, and then are you able to go to like your downloads where you put the the video files in in that dialog box? Yeah, and there's there's horror short trailer. Yeah. And VIC three point one win sixty four. It says compressed file. If I try oh. to if I try to drag that over, yeah, it doesn't do anything. Yeah, you gotta you gotta uncompress it. Um, so if you go to your your file manager, uh, I'm not sure what it's called on Windows, but it's that little folder. 
you've got to you've got to uncompress it. Um, and maybe someone who's better at Windows, is there is there a step that you need to do to to unzip something, or is it just you double click on it? There's a button on the top when you open up the little folder that looks like a Manila folder on the bottom of your your desktop and you click on where you had it saved, there's a little button that says unzip files on the top. If you click that unzip files, it'll, it'll open them all. Yeah. Horror short trailer, <clears throat> got some kind of folder on it. It doesn't, no. It might say extract all. Or if you double click on it, it'll open it and then it'll have a, an extract all button on top. I don't see that. Okay. No, I'll just go, just, just continue on. All right, all right, no worries. I'll, I'll, I'll mess around here and see if I can figure it yeah, out. Yeah, sounds good. Okay, so let's uh, let's start some dragging some stuff into our timeline. So like we talked about, this is our media pool over to the left here. This is our preview of what's in our media pool. And then this blank spot right here um, is going to be our timeline. So our timeline is where we're going to work. It's our workspace. Um, so we're going to start by clicking and dragging this clip that's called Monster Reveal. So when it's selected, it's going to have that red box around it. That means it's selected. You're going to click and drag it. Click and drag into the timeline, and you're going to see that this box over here now has some stuff happening in it. So um, when you're in the timeline, click to make sure you're in this timeline here. You can press space bar, and it'll start to play what is in your timeline. So you can see, here's the clip. This monster is being revealed. This guy in this hazmat suit is being revealed. And we've got a video track and an audio track. Um, so another cool thing about this program is that you can layer stuff on top of each other. Um, so imagine like it's pieces of paper. So video one is gonna be the first layer. And then if we take, let's take ax cut, we can overlay on top of video one, a second video. Um, so that's kind of a, a cool aspect of the program is that you know you can layer things on top of each other and you can do lots of creative stuff with that. So I'm gonna delete that X cut, we don't need that. And we're gonna trim this uh, monster reveal because there's a bunch, you know, there's like probably five or six seconds here at the beginning that is absolutely nothing. We, we don't want any of that stuff. Um, so again, you know, there's multiple ways to do things in this program, but uh, I'm going to show you one of the ways. You should have a little toolbar up here, and we're going to click on this. Uh, it looks like a razor blade. It's called the blade tool. You can press B to click it if, if you want to do that as well. And we're going to head over to where our playhead is or, you know, wherever you're wanting to chop uh, this video, and you're just going to click, and it's going to make a cut on this video. So now this video that was one is two. Um, and then you can select. So you're going to have to go back up here and, and get your selection tool. And you can click and drag and you can delete that beginning portion. And then you'll see if we go to the very beginning of our video, it's blank again. We need to delete this blank space. You can select the blank space and you can delete. And there you go. That's the uh, We've, we've chopped off that beginning portion. So now all we've got is this nice kind of movement where he's kind of moving around. Cool. Um, so you'll notice that there is some audio on this monster reveal. And it's, uh, it's kind of people in the background that are saying, you know, action, cut. So we don't want any of that uh, extra audio. So you'll notice that when you click on the video, it'll also click on the audio. Um, that we don't want that. We want to just select the audio. So you'll go back up to your little toolbar that's right here. And um, this, there's kind of a link icon. You'll click that off. So it was, when it was clicked on, it was kind of white. You'll click it off. Now it's gray. And you want to, now you can select video and audio separately. Um, so I'm going to just delete that audio. We don't want any of that audio. And so now we just have a silent track of this monster uh, 
This guy in this hazmat suit, he's being revealed. So great, so we're gonna go a few seconds. Um, so I, I don't know if you guys can, can see, but I'm, I'm using this, this is called the playhead, this red uh, line with a, an arrow. You can use it to scrub the timeline and kind of you know fast forward to see what's going on. If I wanna jump somewhere, I can click and it'll go there. Um, so I don't want this end portion. So I'm gonna use the blade tool and I'm gonna cut it and then I'm gonna grab the selection tool I don't want to delete this though, because I've actually got another clip in here. That's a nice close up of the monster that we're going to use later. So what you can do is you can click and drag and I'm just going to click and drag it kind of near the away from where I'm working <laughs> and we'll, we'll come back to that. So we've got our first little clip in here and uh, you know, any good movie trailer is going to have some text, some text to kind of drive what's happening. So we've got a bunch of these different, uh, these different windows we can open up. So we'd opened up the media pool to import our media. I'm going to close that for now. And we're going to open up this other window called the effects library. So you'll click that. Yours might look different depending on how much, you know, screen space you've got, um, might look a little bit different, but we want to be in this toolbox area, which is the far left. And we're going to go up to this magnifying glass. And we're going to search. So in here is a bunch of cool stuff. You've got crossfades, you've got an, an arrow iris. These are all different types of like transitions, a push, a slide. Um, you can click and drag them onto the clip and you'll see what they do. But we don't want any of those things. We want to search for um, the title. Is that it? No, text. We want to search for the, the text uh, effect. So you can click it and you're going to click and drag and it's going to populate into the timeline. So now we've got our video and we've got a simple text slide that's happening right here. Uh, so it just says title. We want it to say not just title. We wanted to say something a little bit more interesting. Um, so the way that you can edit the attributes of this text slide is you'll go up to the far right corner and there's this button called inspector and you'll click that. And now you can see all the different attributes that you can edit from this text slate. Um, so I'm going to put in here, let's see, a monster, something like that. And you've got all these different, um, different options. You can change the, what the font is based on the fonts that you've got downloaded. So I'm going to change mine to, Kind of a campy looking font because this is a little bit of a campy little horror film. And you can change if you've got different font faces, you can change it to bold, regular, whatever. Um, you can also change the color. Um, so it'll pull up a little user interface here. Um, and I like to go to this one called image palettes. It might look different if you're on a Windows, I'm not 100% sure. Um, and you can, you know, choose any color you want the text to be. Um, so I'm going to choose kind of a white. I would prefer it to be just pure white. Um, now you got these other options too. You got the size, so you can click and drag, or you can kind of hone in the size. You can type in whatever you want. So let's say 120. That's a little bit small. We'll do 150. Um, you got line spacing. That's if you've got multiple lines of text. All sorts of stuff. Um, but one of the cool things that I want to show you guys is this thing called keyframing. Um, so basically what you're going to do is you're, you're going to tell the computer uh, that I want this text to kind of move towards me. I'm going to have it zoom. That's the attribute that we're going to edit. So in order to, to set a keyframe, you've got to be in this inspector panel. And we're going to go down to the attribute called zoom. And we're going to click this little gray diamond. And so you click that gray diamond and basically you're telling the computer at this point in time, I want this text to be at this uh, zoom capacity. So it's one, one, one. We're going to drag our playhead to the end or not the end, but kind of midway through the clip. And we're going to change the zoom position. And so you can click and drag this zoom and you'll see that it starts to zoom. Or you can type in a number. I'm going to type in 1.5. And now we've set two keyframes that'll tell the computer to zoom from this point to whenever we set that next keyframe.
that second point. So I think it's a fun little effect. It's, it's a nice little, uh, little campy zoom. So we've got our first clip and then we've got a monster. Very exciting. So now the question is, how do I go in and edit these keyframes if I want to change the position? So you can go back to the zoom and you'll see that these uh, arrows have appeared and you can toggle between your two keyframes you've set, which is, which is nice, but for me, I'm a more visual person. I like to see the keyframes. I like to see and click and drag where they're at. And you can do that too. So if you look uh, at this text title slate, you'll see these two different icons. There's like a, a diamond that's kind of half filled in and then an, an S looking thing. You'll uh, click on the, the S looking thing and it'll bring up these two key keyframes that you've set. Um, and so to kind of explain this, the, the way that the motion is working, it's, mo it's working very linearly. Um, so it's a constant amount of motion that we're telling the computer to do. Um, so the cool thing is you can, you can totally edit that. Um, let's, uh, so, so right now I don't have the options that I want to see. Maybe, maybe that's happening to you as well. You can press command and plus, or you can go over here and you can zoom in to be able to see better, you know, what you're working with. Um, so there's some fun little options up here where you can actually change how the movement works of this text slide. Um, so if you double click on one of them, so we'll double click on this one and I'll just kind of show you guys how this works because it's kind of fun. It's going to give us a little bit of a handle um, and it's going to create a curve for us. So now you'll see it's going to do a lot. It's going to do a much different motion. It does kind of a weird little bump in and then a bump out. Um, so you can really mess with this and, and you know, I can move this over here. And if you see, if I move this up, it's actually going to increase that value. Um, you can do all sorts of stuff with this. Um, so th this motion is now like more of a, a, a slow to fast. Um, so th those are some really, so you can do a ton of, uh, a ton of cool stuff with that. Hey Garrett. Yeah. Can I ask a question? Go for it. Um, what if I wanted to add a, hard zoom out after that first keyframe? Like how do I add another keyframe, I guess is what I'm asking. Oh yeah, yeah, that, that's, that's a good question. So um, you'll just, the keyframes will be populated where your playhead is. Um, so say I wanted, yeah, I wanted to zoom in and then I wanted this to like go out. I would uh, just edit the zoom feature right here and it'll add another keyframe for you. Was, did that answer your question? Cool. Yeah, so you can, I mean, you can set as many keyframes as you want, really. Um, so now we've got kind of a zoom in and then a zoom out. Um, so the, the, the other cool thing is, so this inspector panel, it's got all sorts of different attributes you can edit. Um, so, and this is purely in the, the text tab of this, uh, of this text title slate. We could go over to this video spot. And then we've got a whole host of other things that we can keyframe in and out. So I'll just give you some examples of, of what some of the stuff does. So we've got a, uh, let's see. Oh. Let me make sure I'm selected on it. Um, so this is another zoom. We don't want that. This is a cropping. We've got a, uh, here we go. This pitch and yaw. So pitch and yaw, that's going to kind of do this little funky uh, rotation thing. So you could do some sort of transition where you make this, um, let me reset this to zero. You can make it a uh, transition on that way and you can do it with keyframes as well. So if I wanted to do like a little funky, I'm going to put a keyframe here and then I'm going to put a keyframe here and you'll see it zooms in and then does kind of a weird looking thing like that. <laughs> Um, so you can do all sorts of different stuff with, uh, with these other keyframes that exist in the, in the video side. Um, so yes, yeah, so you can play around with that. So I'm just going to do a, a simple little zoom in here. I think that looks all right. And I'm going to trim this text slide. I don't want it to be on for super long. So I'm going to play it. I want it to be on for about that long. So we can go back up to the blade tool and we can cut it or we can just, um, use the, the, the end of the clip and just click and drag it. 
So that's another way to kind of trim, trim clips. So I'm going to close this effects library. I'm going to open back up our media pool. So we've got the monster. Now let's reveal our protagonist. Um, okay, so we've got the clip here. So you can see I'm doing the same thing that I do in the timeline where I kind of click and drag and I can scrub the, scrub the clip. I'm going to show you guys another fun thing that you can do. Instead of dragging this full thing in, right, and having to mess with it on the timeline, you can avoid that step altogether by going into this preview window and you can figure out where you want it to start. And on your keyboard, you can press I, which stands for in. And then you say, I want to go until here. And then you press O for out. And then if I drag from this portion, if I drag from this preview window, it'll only bring in that section that I didn't end out to. Um, so that's a way that you can kind of speed up your editing. Uh, you know, if you don't want to drag this full thing in, and, and especially if your clip is really long, right, you're probably wanting, wanting to do some end outs. So like we talked about before, we've got this audio that we don't want and we can just delete that. Or I'll show you, we can just drag in the video without audio. So you'll see the two icons down here, a uh, sound icon. And this is supposed to be kind of like a film reel. So this means you'll bring in only the video or only the audio. So I just want to bring in the video. So I'm just going to click and drag it onto my timeline like that. Um, and so you'll also notice this might happen to you guys as well. The audio got really pushed down. And so if you go over here um, to this part where, you know, video one, video two, and in between the video and the audio, just click and drag up and you've got your audio track back and kind of everything is, uh, is back to normal. Um, does, uh, does anyone have any, any questions to this point? Uh, is anyone stuck on something? I'm gonna kind of go ahead for some other stuff or, uh, unless we've got some questions. We're good? All right. Okay, let's move on. So. We've got about kind of three clips in here. We've got this video, we've got a t title to slate, and then we've got this, uh, this monster reveal. So again, you know, this is a bit of a long clip. I kind of want her to pop up just right there. So I'm gonna click and drag, take this empty space and delete it. So we got a monster, boom. All right, now we understand we have some sort of protagonist. We've got some sort of a girl. Um, and I'm gonna add another, another text slate in between here. So instead of going through and going to the effects library and doing text and dragging it in, uh, you can just copy and paste it, this one that we've already created, which is really nice because it'll copy and paste all the attributes that we've put onto it. So that zoom, um, you don't have to worry about that again, it's already there. So I'm gonna select it, I'm gonna bit Command C or Control C, uh, Control C on a Windows and then Command V, Control V on um, kind of Windows machine. And it's gonna copy that exact thing. And so we don't want it to say monster, we want it to say something else. We're gonna say the chase of a lifetime. And it'll just edit it right in there. And so you'll see that you can't see this, uh, it's, it's too large. So just go in here and edit that. Let's make it 100. And you'll see that the zoom is still intact, still is, is functioning. You can see that it's actually kind of too much now. I don't want it to zoom that much because it's cutting off the text. So I'm gonna change it to probably 1.2, maybe 1.3. Um, and you gotta make sure that you're on that keyframe because if, if, I, if I did that change over here, you know, 1.5 or something, you'll see it adds a keyframe where I don't want a keyframe to exist. So you can do Command Z or Control Z to, to, to edit that out. So there we go, we got a chase of a lifetime. We're gonna go back to our media pool and we're gonna try and grab another clip. We're gonna use this one, let's see, girl trying the door or girl banging on the door. Let's do the girl trying the door and then we'll cut to her banging on the door. So I'm doing that in to out again. So I double clicked on this to open it up in the preview window. I did in to out to just grab this portion where she's she's yanking on the door handle. 
I don't want any audio, so I'm just dragging the, the pure video over. And then I'm going to go to this, this clip with her banging on the door, and it's going to be a nice transition where she's yanking on the door, and then she's banging on the door. So I did in to out, and I'm going to grab that clip and drag it down to her timeline. So we've got yanking on the door, she's banging on the door. It's a little bit fast. Let's drag that a little bit. We also see chase of a lifetime kind of stops right there. So I'm going to drag this. So that way it's a continuous movement. She's yanking on the door. I don't know if I, I, I don't like yanking on a little too long. <laughs> this is where you can really finesse your video. You know, you can really get into the weeds of it. Um, so yeah, she's yanking on the door. That seemed like a nice transition. Oh. Yeah, we have a question. Oh, oh you're good. All right. Okay, I do great. have a question. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, no, go for it. I noticed uh, when you're um, messing with the clips down in the um, the timeline. Yeah. Uh, when you want to lengthen them, um, you can just do it from the timeline. You don't have to like do the in out again to make it a little longer. Oh yeah, yeah. You can just do it from the timeline. Uh huh. Yeah, yeah. The in out is purely uh, convenience. Um, when you drag this in. Uh, the, the whole video still exists. It just, uh, you just have to drag it out if you want to, if you want to grab other portions of it. Okay. That makes sense. Thank you. Yeah. 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 So it's really a, it's nice cause it's not, it's not a destructive process or anything like that. Um, it's all still, the raw file is still there. It's just not uh, being shown. So I actually forgot about our fun clip over here. So we need to pull this one in. Um, so if you still have this nice close up of this guy in the hazmat suit, we are going to, so uh, again, I'm doing uh, command or I guess control on a Windows, command plus and minus to zoom into my timeline. You can also do that over here, this plus and minus um, slider over there. Um, so I wanna grab, there's a really fun transition here. So if you scrub to this portion where he is, he's looking and he, he looks over there, this is when he notices that the girl is there. Oops. So I, I like this because it transitions well to her running away, actually. Um, so the chase of a lifetime, we're going to, we're going to, so, so you can select multiple clips in the timeline by clicking and dragging. It'll pull up a little marquee square and you can just click and drag these over here. And I'm just going to click and drag this over here, the chase of a lifetime. Why is it the chase of a lifetime? Because he just notices her right there. Oops. And like we talked about before, this, this clip uh, still has all the handles to it. Um, that's what's the, the other parts of the clip. That's what's called handles. So I'm going to copy and paste this over here because I want, there's more to this clip that I want. I want this part where she runs away. So I'm going to use the blade tool. You can press B to open up the blade tool or you can go up here and select it. I'm going to cut right here. I'm going to grab the selection tool delete this part that I don't want because I've already got it and then click and drag it to this part. So you'll notice um, some of the stuff, it'll, it'll snap to the spot that it needs to be. I don't know if you guys have noticed that. Sometimes it's helpful, sometimes it's annoying. Um, you can undo that. You can, you can toggle it on and off with this magnet icon. So right now mine's toggled off. I must have pressed something that toggled it off. looks like N. <laughs> um, so I can toggle it back on so you'll see that it, it'll snap to my playhead or it'll snap to the end of that clip. Um, so sometimes it's helpful, sometimes it gets in your way. So just so you know, if you're struggling, you want something to be somewhere specifically, it's not letting you toggle that off and then you've got free control over it. So we've got this, he's gonna look over there. I'm gonna further edit this a little bit more because I want it to be a more of a quick reaction here. So you'll see that I, I dragged this and this clip dragged out as well. I didn't necessarily want that. I didn't want that to happen. So I'm going to go and I'm going to trim this back. And we've got empty space right here. This is kind of a, a, a fun little quick editing tool. You got empty space right here. It's called a ripple delete. You press delete and it just pushes it right there. So let's see the chase of a lifetime. 
The chase has begun. Great. And then we could probably keep these clips over here. Chase of a lifetime. She's grabbing the door. Maybe, maybe we want a little bit of a text slide in there to transition. So um, uh, another, this is a, another kind of cool thing. If, if you want to, instead of doing copy and pasting, that can be a little bit annoying. You can uh, hold option and click and drag and it'll create a copy, an exact copy. It's exactly like copy and paste, but sometimes I just find it easier to use option. Um, and it'll copy that right there. And so we will put another one. Will she survive? Um, now, another important thing to notice about this uh, text editor is that it has no autocorrect, no spell check. Um, so if you are doing something that is spelling crucial, um, like someone's uh, lower third or like a, any, I mean, most things are spelling crucial, aren't they? But <laughs> Uh, you'll, you'll, you'll want to make sure you put it in some sort of other text editing document to make sure that you spelled everything correctly. So I'm pretty sure I spelled survive right there. Will she survive? Boom, we've got this clip of her yanking on the door. All very fine and dandy. Um, we'll add one more text slide. And it'll say coming soon, dot, dot, dot. And I, the way that I did that, again, I did that option drag to get that text slide over here coming soon. And then we'll add our final clip, which is gonna be this ax cut. So this is kind of a cool little, uh, a cool little clip. The way that they filmed it was, um, they did it reverse. So he's, he's pulling the ax up instead of putting it down because the cameraman is right there, obviously, right? You don't want the ax to land on the cameraman that's, uh, a work hazard, I'm sure. <laughs> um, so they're relying on the editor, that's us, to reverse this clip. So let's first find the portion that we want. So we probably want right here. So it begins right here. I'm going to use the blade tool, selection tool, delete, delete. Or he yanks up real fast. And then I'm just going to trim that clip right there. Okay, so if you've got if you've got that clip where you want it what we're going to do now is we're going to reverse the time of it so if you right click onto this you'll you'll get a bunch of different options um so we're going to go to this one option that's called change clip speed and it'll put up a little menu for us and we've got all sorts of stuff we can speed it up if we want we can change how many frames per second it is we can change the duration uh, we can do a ripple sequence, but what we want to focus on is this reverse speed. So I'll just click that box and click change. And then you'll see that clip is now reversed. So now it, it kind of sells it a little bit that he's chopping down instead of uh, yanking back up. So that's kind of a fun little editing technique there. Boom. And that will be uh, the end of our, of our video there, right there. So I think we've got a nice little timeline here. We've got kind of our text slides. We've got our video. You guys can mess around with this a lot more. You know, there's, there's more clips in here that you could, uh, you could mess around with and change some stuff around. Um, but, you know, really quick here, we're, we're, we're kind of closing in on the end of our time. So I want to make sure we cover some other important aspects of video. It's not just visual. It's also audio. Um, <laughs> it's a very important part of video. So... We're gonna go back over to this media pool. Um, if you've got this still open or closed, uh, open it back up. And we're gonna, I'm gonna drag this, this one that's called Lost by Generation. This is, a, this is the song that I prefer. And again, just like what we did with our video, we're just gonna click and drag it into the timeline. And, and that's gonna have, um, that's gonna be our music, our music for our trailer. Um, so I'm gonna play it a little bit and you're gonna hear it through my speakers. So you'll see that uh, it's, I think it's a little bit loud. And also we've got a few, like a second here that is not being used. So I, I'm just gonna trim that because I want the music to start right when the video starts. Um, and if, if you guys don't see these waveforms or if you don't see this, uh, this video, if, if you've got a smaller screen, you won't be able to see these things. 
you can uh, extend how big or small these things are by clicking and dragging on the bottom of it. So if, you're, if your audio looks really small, you can click and drag it and it'll, it'll be bigger, um, which is helpful because I know it's really hard to see, but there is a, a thin line here that can do an overall edit of your audio. If, you, if your audio is too loud, you can just bring it down. So you'll see these two arrows up and down. So I'm just gonna, I'm gonna bring it down for seven dBs, something like that. And that seems good to me. And then another thing, if you've got that inspector window still open, um, you can do the exact same thing we do with the title where we zoomed in, but just think of it in audio instead. You can uh, bring the audio up or bring the audio down with these keyframes. Um, so again, I'll just show you a quick example, but I'm gonna keyframe it right here. And then I want the audio to rise. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna place another keyframe and then change the value. And you'll see my waveform start to get larger. And then I'm gonna put another keyframe and I'm gonna bring it back down. So that's really helpful, you know, if, if you're doing some sort of thing that is uh, dialogue or voice based and you've got someone that's quieter and someone that's louder, um, you can kind of keyframe it so that person is the same volume as the other person. I don't know if you guys have watched videos before where, you know, one person is really quiet, one person is really loud, you can fix that um, by keyframing it. Or, you know, if they're separate audio tracks, you can just raise the volume of one and lower the volume of the other. So that's, um, that's our audio there. Uh, you'll notice that the, the song extends for a long time. We want to clip it to the end of our video. Oops. Um, because we don't want all this extra stuff. When we go to finalize and export our video, if we haven't trimmed stuff, like if I have a video somewhere down here, uh, the program is going to read everything. So it's going to export our little video and then it's going to export a bunch of black space. And then if we've got a video all the way down here, it'll export that video. So we want to make sure our timeline is clean. There's nothing that's like hidden, um, nothing that shouldn't be there because um, we want to export everything. Um, all right, so I'll go over real quick now. We've got some other fun things that we can do to our video. So our video is kind of colorful. It's kind of, kind of blue. We can, uh, we can kind of change that up a little bit. We can make it a little more gritty. Um, a little more horror filmy. Um, so I gave you guys some textures to, to play around with. So this is a JPEG. Um, so you can just click and drag it onto the timeline and extend it out. And it's just an old paper texture. And so what I'm gonna do, it's, it's facing the wrong way. I want it to be uh, vertical, not horizontal, or I want it to be horizontal, not vertical. Um, and so I am going to click on it, go into this inspector, and I'm going to rotate it 90 degrees. And you'll see, now you can see that our, our video is, is behind us there. So now I want it to fill the full screen. So I'm going to click and drag on this zoom to make it fill the full screen. Um, so it's covering our entire video. So all the work that we did is, is for nothing, basically. No. <laughs> no, so what you can do is you can do some cool, uh, in this inspector, you've got a composite. And you can do some cool compositing things um, where you can basically overlay this texture on top of your video. So I'm gonna do like an overlay perhaps, and you can kind of see now, I'm gonna zoom in. So I'm using the scroll wheel to zoom in. You can kind of see now our video has like some spots on it and some texture. That's kind of nice. I don't particularly love overlay. Um, you can mess around with a ton of these different options. I don't. I don't 100% know exactly what they do. Oftentimes, I'll just cycle through them to figure out what looks best. <laughs> um, and I suggest that you guys do the same because there's all sorts of, so this is, this is kind of cool, huh? I did a hue. And it really changes the whole color of our entire video. So that's kind of fun. Now, you'll, you'll notice, depending on what kind of machine you're on, what kind of computer, uh, your computer might start to slow down. Um, so if that's the case, don't worry. Uh, you can just turn this off for now with this little, uh, this little icon over here. You can turn it off so that way your computer is not um, about to take off into space because it's working so hard. <laughs> um, so that's some fun stuff. So we've got uh, a paper texture and then I've got another one uh, like a little bit of a film grain. 
So I'm going to double click it and drag it in. I'm going to delete the audio because there's no audio to it. And again, just like the paper texture, I can drag it on top of what we've got here. And so you can see, now I can't really see everything that I want. So I'm going to make these smaller. And I'm going to do the same thing we just did with the, uh, with that other one. I'm going to go over, I'm into click on the grain, go into the inspector and just play around with what we've got here to see if we've got something where we can see the grain, but it's not really messing up our image that we want. So now you can see there's like some flickers and stuff to everything. Kind of nice, kind of, kind of interesting. Um, so again, if that, you know, if your computer is really bogged down trying to play that, just hide them for now and then make sure you reveal them when you export. So yeah, so um, I know that there was a request to talk about GIFs. So I want to, I want to cover that really fast. Um, Can I so, ask a question about yeah. audio first? Yeah, yeah, go for it. Um, if if I'm trying to, like on these videos, I can see that your audio and your video are two separate tracks, right? But if I'm importing something like from a cell phone video, is that going to be two separate tracks? And am I going to be able to unlink it? Yeah, yeah, it, it'll be. Um, so uh, let's, let's, I'll use this as an example because this has audio on it. Um, so imagine this is your cell phone footage. When I click and drag it in, it's going to appear as um, a video track and an audio track. And it'll, it'll come together depending on how you decide to import it, um, if that makes sense. Um, does that, does that answer your question? If it was like, I just didn't know if it was like a low quality cell video, if it was going to be two separate tracks still, but it will. Yeah, yeah, it'll always okay. be. Yeah, the video is only video and these audio tracks will only be audio. So yeah, if, you're, if your cell phone footage has audio, it'll appear um, as an audio track. Sweet. Um, okay, yeah, so, so GIFs. So uh, DaVinci Resolve does not read GIF files. Um, so what you'll have to do is you'll have to convert them into MP4s. So I'll, I'll go over that uh, kind of quickly here. Um, but we'll just grab one of these. We'll do this uh, data. Um, so grab whatever GIF you want and you'll right click on it and you'll do save it image as. I'm gonna save it to my downloads. Great. So I've got this GIF. So if I try to import it like everything else, DaVinci Resolve unfortunately does not, uh, does not read the GIF file type. So what you need to do is you need to just type into Google GIF to MP4. And you've got a nice little online converter here. Just follow the instructions for it. I'm going to go through this real quick. Open it up. Upload. Take a minute. It'll kind of convert it. Yeah, that'll uh, just like spit out the, the file type you need. Yeah, yeah. It'll convert it to an MP4, which is a file type that DaVinci Resolve recognizes. Um, so that's taking, so yeah, so here it is. This is just this, this type of uh, website. You know, there's other ones. So convert GIF to MP4 and it'll appear down here. Click save, it'll download it. And then I'm just gonna import it so you guys can see what we're talking about. So we've got this GIF. It is now basically just a video. Um, I'm gonna put it on the top of all this. And if you've got your inspector window open, you know, GIFs usually don't take up the full screen, right? They're usually kind of funny little additions. Um, so you can change the position of it and all that jazz. And so now we've got, will she survive? And we've got data laughing, which seems uh, inappropriate <laughs> for such a dire situation. But uh, again, you know, if you want your, your GIF to loop, um, just copy and paste it. And, you know, GIFs perfectly loop, right? So. It'll just loop again right there, and you just treat it as a uh, as a video file. Um, so that's that. I know that was something that people wanted. They wanted to understand GIFs. So, uh, so okay. So we've got our video. We've done all this wonderful hard work. We need to make sure to save our stuff, by the way. So uh, Control C, Command C, if you're on a Mac, um, save your project file. You don't want to lose it. Uh, we basically, so now we need to, to export it in this, to, into one video because we've got a bunch of videos and audios and all sorts of stuff stacked on together. 
um, when we export, it's meshing them all together into one final product. So we'll go over down to this bottom section to this rocket ship. Uh, it's called Deliver. You'll click on Deliver and it'll pull up a bunch of different windows now. Um, and so basically you're telling the program how you want to, how you want your final video, you know, what format do you want in? You want MP4, you want an MOV, you, you know, these are just different video file formats. Um, but what's great about DaVinci Resolve, it's got a bunch of presets as well. So I'm just gonna go to YouTube, um, cause that's a great one. And I'm gonna change it down to 720, so 20, uh, 1280 by 720 HD, um, cause that's the, uh, that's the files we're working with. They're actually, uh, they're, they're not 1080p, they're 720. Um, so I'll change it to, to that, and then I'll go down to format, and I'm going to change it to MP4 because I want it to be an MP4. MP4s are smaller files. This is the file name. We're going to call it Horror Movie Trailer, and we're going to uh, pick a location to save it. So this is going to be where it exists. So I'm going to choose my downloads. Um, I think I probably need to need something else because I have a couple of these. I'm going to click Save. So now what we've told the program, we've told it what we want it to name it, our final video. We've told it where we want it to go. We've told it the resolution. We've told it the format. Um, now what we need to do is we need to click this button that's called add to render queue. Um, so the reason why it, uh, it adds to a queue is the cool thing is you can have multiple things working at the same time and you can kind of export things as you're working on them if that's how you want to do it. Um, I just want to export this final thing. So I said add to render queue. You'll see that it populated over here in this render queue. And all you have to do is click start render. And then it will uh, render this whole thing out. And it'll appear in your downloads. And depending on how fast your computer is, depending on how fast it'll, it'll render. Um, so you'll see now if I open this up, I have got my little horror movie trailer as a video file. Um, does anybody have any do, does anybody have any questions about uh, final exporting or, or kind of I guess any step of the process? Resolve seems really powerful and I'm wondering why I've never heard of it before. Yeah, to be honest. Yeah, it's a, it's a crazy program. It was uh, originally um, what it's known for is color correcting. Um, so you'll see there's there's a tab here I didn't even touch because I don't know how to use it to be honest. But uh, it's color, and it's got a, a f the most professional they call it the most professional color suite um, that any any program has. Um, and so for a long time, it was known for color correcting. And that was all it was known for. Um, but they've recently transitioned into doing video editing, and they even have like a motion graphics section it's called Fusion. And then they have like an audio editing if you really want to get into audio editing for your videos. Um, it's called Fairlight. Um, so it's, it's a great program. Um, there, there's a lot to it. You know, this small 50 minute class or I guess hour and 10 minutes now, hour and 15 minutes, um, just covered the very basics of, you know, how, if I have video, how do I kind of stitch it together and then export it? So hopefully that was something that was helpful for you guys. Um, it's again, it's a great program that it's free. Um, I'll tell you the limitations. The only limitation is that you can't export in 4K, so that's four times HD. Um, but I'll tell you, I only export things in 1080p anyway, so <laughs> uh, that's that's about my resolution limitation anyway. Um, so it's it's a great program. Uh, I can't believe it's free. To be honest, it's it's you know, uh, if you want to buy the full version, I think it's it's not even that expensive in comparison to video editing programs. It's only like three hundred or four hundred dollars. Um, but, uh, but it's great. Uh, I think it's, a, it's an awesome program. Mm -hmm. So there you have it. That's, that's all I've got. Um, sorry, Wolf, that the, the importing the files didn't work out. I actually got them. I actually was able to get them to unzip. <clears throat> so yeah, I just got to mess around with it. Pretty, pretty powerful program. Yeah, yeah. Hopefully, uh, you can get the the video of this class, and maybe you can rewatch it, and, and you can kind of go through the steps. Oh, right, right. Yeah, and uh, you know, of course, there's a million YouTube videos as well, right? Um, so if you just go on YouTube, sure. um, and then also, if if you guys are wanting, um, uh, Alexis can give you guys my email. If you guys uh, have any questions more about the program, I'd be happy to try to answer them. 
um, as well as like uh, places to get music. Um, there's a couple of places that I get music for free. Um, that's, you know, it's totally legal and everything like that. It's copyright loyal, uh, royalty free music, um, sound effects, um, all that kind of stuff. If you guys are, are curious for those kind of assets, um, just to ask Alexis for my email and, and, uh, and we can connect and I can try to give you, you know, kind of these free resources that I've been able to collect um, over the time that I've been doing some video editing. So yeah, so hopefully that was helpful. Um, anything else? Hey, thanks very much. That was interesting. Sorry. Yeah, thank you, Garrett. That was really helpful. Yeah, thanks. Thanks for participating, everybody. Video of this class tonight, and I'm going to put a little note sheet with it along with Garrett's email, and I will email it to everyone who sent me an email um, so that you all have those resources and that you can watch this again, maybe at half speed and, and try <laughs> to get it all done because we went through a lot real fast. Yeah, um, yeah. So if you have any questions, feel free to shoot me an email, but I will look in the next week or so for the video and the note sheet to come out to you. Perfect. Awesome. Thank you right. so much. Thank you. Thanks everyone Thanks. for your time. I appreciate it. Good night. All right. I will see you later. Have a good night.